The Amiga 500, an absolute icon of the 1980s. I think we could all agree though that in its base configuration, just like this one, with only 512k of memory on the motherboard, its use can be a bit restricted. And that's because the vast majority of games out there, especially the later ones, are all going to look for a minimum of 1 megabyte. Now it was a very popular modification back then to stick a memory expansion in the trapdoor. This machine doesn't have that and while I could pick up a simple memory expansion for only about £25, I thought would do something slightly different. For only a few pound more, around £35 to £40, you can get a brand new budget oriented accelerator. Just like this. Now this is a very simple device as it looks. It's got the PLCC 68K processor. There's just one megabyte of RAM on here. But the clock is doubled. The CPU in here is running at 7 megahertz. On this it's running at 14. So for just a few pounds that this costs. Is it something worthwhile thinking about? Let's find out. So let's get this installed, then we can run Amiga Test Kit to test the memory. We'll try sysinfo to see just how much faster it actually is. And then for a bit of real world performance, we'll try a couple of games. This machine is a bit of a mess on the underside. Just three screws along the front and then three along the back. Just lift the keyboard out of the way. That gives us access to the processor where that is going to go. This machine did suffer a little bit of battery damage as you can maybe see some staining on the solder mask here. But that's all it is. There is no actual damage and I have treated all this with white vinegar and IPA. So it does look a bit rough, but it's fine. Need to get that out. One big chunky processor. Let's get our accelerator in there instead. Wait a minute. <laughs> or maybe not. Because it's uh, hitting off the ROM and off Agnes as well. Well, it's mostly hitting off the ROM. How are we going to fix that? I think the only thing we can do here is put another socket in line. So if we put that on there, that just raises everything up that wee bit, and then hopefully this will clear. But definitely something to consider if you're thinking of buying one of these. That is a little bit annoying to be honest. Although, given the shape of this thing, I'm not really sure how else uh, you could deal with it. So if you are thinking of getting one of these, you're going to need a socket or a CPU relocator or something like that. But that's in there now. Just make sure it's clearing everything and yes it is. That's fine. Is it going to clear the keyboard? You'll probably not be able to see it on camera but yeah. It's clearing the keyboard, no problem. Black wire to the left when reconnecting the keyboard. I'll just button it all back up and then we can put this wee accelerator through its paces. Right, everything is hooked up and ready to go. I've got a copy of Amiga Test Kit on this. So let's boot into that and test the memory on our accelerator. So just hit F1 to take us into the memory test and we can see there our chip 
is half a megabyte. That's what's on the Amiga motherboard. And then over on the right, slow, that's one megabyte. That's what's on the accelerator. Then if we just press F1 again, it will run its test. And we'll leave that going for a while, just to make sure everything is nice and stable. Right, that's been around five times. This is fine. I didn't think there would be any problems, but always worth testing. Let's move on to sysinfo and see just how much faster the accelerator actually is. So this is the machine running in its original configuration at 7 megahertz. I just want to see what it scores here. So we're getting 549 dry stones. Our speed against 7 megahertz A600 is 1.03 times. MIPS 0 0.57 and our chip speed is 1.05. But with the accelerator in, just how much of an improvement are we going to get? My goodness, that is a lot more than I was expecting. That is impressive. So our dry stones there has jumped from 549 up to 1454. Equally, our CPU speed is now 2.74 times that of an A600. And our MIPS has essentially tripled up to 1.51. Interestingly, the chip speed versus A600 has also increased. That is quite the jump in performance, but will it translate into the games? Now in terms of games to test, well, there's not much point in running the likes of Lemmings, because a game such as this works perfectly fine on the stock Amiga 500, even with just 512k of memory. So to find out just how much of an improvement we will see in games, we're going to have to run some of those games that, well, push the stock 500 to its limits. Those are generally 3D games, and the first one I'm going to test with is this, Microprose Golf. Now, this does require an A500 with 1 megabyte of RAM. So for the test, I stuck this little memory expansion in the trapdoor just to bring us up to that one megabyte requirement of this game. And in fact, all the other games we're going to test as well. So let's just see how much faster the 14 megahertz processor is compared to the 7 megahertz in games. So for the purpose of this test, let's just play the first hole of Fairdale Park. Par 5, 500 yards, stroke index 3. So let's see if we can send a drive down the middle of the fairway. I used to be really good at this game, but I'm probably a bit out of practice. Yeah, that's a bit of a slice. This will probably wind up in the trees. But what we're really more interested in here is just comparing the frame rate between the two. Can't really go for the green, so let's just take an 8 iron and try and knock this back out onto the fairway. That'll do, it's back in play.
Just going to aim this off to the right slightly just to make sure we avoid those trees. Let's see if we can hit a good one. Right out of the screws. Middle of the green. Pot for birdie. Green sloping right to left. Have I hit it? Not even close. Let's see if we can rescue a par out of this. Yep, I'll take it. Right, let's move over to the accelerator and let's see if the frame rate seems any smoother. Okay, let's try that again. Let's see if we can't do any better. So let's smash one down the middle of the fairway. Come on. Let's see if that frame rate is any better. That's exactly the same shot. In fact, this one might be even more into the trees. But more importantly, that did seem a lot smoother. The camera following the ball, that's all 3D and polygons. And yeah, it definitely seemed a lot better to me. I'm gonna have to try and hit this 8 iron again. There's a little gap in the trees. Can we thread it through back onto the fairway? Better shot out of the rough this time. Only a 7 iron into the green. Let's try and hit a good one. Come on. Yeah, another good approach shot. This should find the middle of the dance floor. And again, that frame rate following the ball in flight definitely seems quite a bit smoother. Our little accelerator is doing the job. Let's see if we can finish this off nicely with a little birdie. Oh, maybe if I had a hit it. Well, we'll just have to settle for the par again. Let's move on to the next game. And yes, you've seen it a million times before, but how could we not run Frontier Elite 2, and in particular that intro? Well, actually, I want to do something slightly different, because when I got this machine, it also came with a pile of demo discs, including some that are brand new, just like this one. And look at that, Frontier Elite 2. This is a rolling demo. I have never seen this before. So let's crack this open and see what it is. I suspect it will just be the intro, but be interested to see if it's any different from the intro that is in the final game. We're all very familiar with that. I've never seen this before. Let's see what it's all about. It has been many years since I opened a brand new demo disc. That's just typical. One quick cleaning session later. And away it goes. And this time, let's just run them side by side. In fact, we'll do it split screen. Then hopefully you can see the difference between the seven megahertz Amiga and the 14 megahertz accelerator. Right, I've done my best to sync these up. We have 14 megahertz on the left and the seven megahertz on the right. You can sort of see already that it is quite a bit faster with the accelerator. It's odd that there's a slight different tint in the color, isn't it? 
It's exactly the same Amiga, exactly the same cable, and all exactly the same settings. I have no idea why there's that slight change in colour tint, but more importantly, that frame rate. Well, yeah, it is quite a bit faster on the left hand side. And this rolling demo, well, it's obviously the intro. I don't see anything different yet, anyway. But if you see anything different in this, please let me know. Quite a big difference there at that point with the ship taking off. I wouldn't say it's smooth on the 14 MHz side. As we all know you need a fairly fast 030 processor to run this game smoothly, but it's an awful lot better than it is on the 7 MHz side on the stock A500. I expect you'll see quite a difference here. That is unbelievable. Definitely a lot faster with the accelerator. I'm actually really surprised, to be honest, just how much of a speed improvement we're getting. I mean, I knew it would be faster. I just didn't expect it to be as much of an improvement as it was. We're doubling the clock speed, but it's definitely more than twice the performance. So it looks like that's the only real difference there, just that end screen. Frontier Elite 2, only the very best mature with time. Okay, last game we are going to try today. How about something brand new? Something that I have written onto here. Let's try Dread. So one cool feature about this game, other than the fact it runs flawlessly on a 7 MHz Amiga, is that we can also work out just how fast it is running. See that little number on the top left, currently 3.78? That is essentially your frame time, as in how long it takes to draw each frame of the game as you see. So on our PAL Amiga, which is running at 50 Hz, we take that 50, we divide it by that frame time, 3.78, and that gives us the frames per second, which is currently about 13.2. So that frame time is going to jump about a wee bit, but as you would expect, you know, as you move about, it's drawing different things, so that is going to change. And I think what we'll do here is we'll just play through half of the first level at 7 megahertz, then I'll change over and show you the second half at the 14 megahertz. This game is absolutely nothing short of impressive. It is unbelievable just how well this runs on a 7 MHz Amiga 500. The only requirement is 1 MB of RAM.
But I think like the first proper first person shooter that we really got on the Amiga, well, the first one sort of like this that comes to my mind anyway is Gloom. That was on the AGA system. I had that on the CD32. And it did not run as good as this. Didn't even look as good as this. Oh, come on. Right, so we've picked up the red key card there. I'm going to pause things at this point and we'll move over to the accelerator. Just take note there that in this outdoor arena, the frame time there, 4.51. Well, isn't that interesting? Because we're now on the 14 megahertz accelerator, but look at that frame time. That has increased to 7. Then if we do our calculation, that would suggest a frame rate of 7.1 frames per second. That cannot be right. The accelerator must be doing something funny here with how that is calculated because as you'll see in a second, the game runs a lot smoother. But not only is that frame rate a lot smoother with the accelerator, the controls are a lot better as well. So while that frame time suggests that the game is running slower, it can't be, it definitely cannot be. It is running significantly faster. That wall looks a bit funny. And there's a chain gun hiding behind it. I really can't get over just how awesome this game is. If we had had this back in the day, back in the early 90s, it would have been an absolute game changer. Everybody said the Amiga couldn't do a Doom clone. I think that has been proven wrong here. Can't wait to see this further developed. A thought occurs. What happens if you have this in here? with its one megabyte of slow RAM on there. But if you were to also have 512K expansion in the trapdoor, is it gonna see all the memory? Or only this, or only that? Let's find out. So just an Amiga test kit, if we hit F1 to show us the memory and check that out. Our chip RAM remains 0.5 megabyte, but the slow RAM is still just one megabyte. So the Amiga is only seeing the memory on this. It doesn't see that. Just something to consider if you were thinking about getting one of these and if you already have 512K in your trapdoor that is going to be overridden by that. So the little 14 megahertz accelerator, I cannot help but be impressed. It doesn't have the horsepower or the features of the likes of one of the terrible fire cards. This is just one megabyte of RAM, only 14 megahertz 68K processor, but I am absolutely blown away just by how much of a difference it does make. Definitely a worthwhile investment if you just want a bit more performance out of your stock Amiga 500. Now you do have to bear in mind of course that if you do have that trapdoor 512k in there that is going to get overridden by this. You also need the socket on top of the existing CPU socket in there to fit this so that it clears the ROM as we seen earlier. And your other problem, of course, is getting one of these because, well, to the best of my knowledge anyway, these aren't sold by any of the Amiga retailers. This is essentially just a wee hobby project 
I happened to pick this one up from Sparks UK on Discord. He had made a couple of these and I got this one off him. I have seen a few others pop up for sale on some of the Facebook groups and I'm sure on Amibay there's somebody probably making them. Or if you want to have a go at making one yourself, I'll post links to the GitHub in the description down below. But yeah, it is a very impressive little bit of hardware. I solved the issue with Dread, by the way. Asking on their Discord server transpires that where that frame time drops below 2, the game's code just gets a bit confused with that and you get an overflow there. So I went hooking through all the captured footage I had and found one time where the frame rates had obviously dropped quite a bit in the gameplay. I'll stick a picture on screen of it now. And as you can see at 7 megahertz, our frame time increased to 5.04. So that was a frame rate of 9.9. .9. But under the 14 megahertz, the frame time was above 2. So it was 2.58. And that gives us a frame rate of 19.4 frames per second. Almost 10 FPS difference in it. That is quite impressive. And considering development of the game Dread is very active at the minute, dare I say, could we call this the Dread Accelerator? Because I know the game runs perfectly fine on the 7 MHz machine, but with this cheap accelerator in there, it just becomes so much more playable. Everything just smooths out beautifully. Well, that's it for now. So hopefully you enjoyed this wee video. If you did, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Why not hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. Still plenty more yet to come here on CRG. And I'll see you next time.